everyone, it's Amy, and we are here for week 12 of Build Your Stash and Craft. And this week we are going to make scrap monsters. And here are two of my sample ones that I did up ahead of time. And so this is what we're going to do today. And what we're going to need is we're going to need some scraps of paper. I have some little scraps here that I have ripped out of, uh, um, this is just a, a flyer for... Um, coupons and I just kind of wanted to show you like the way that I did it because sometimes you think well I can't get anything out of there but these stripes are really cool and so you just go ahead I've already kind of started so this wouldn't take so long but see now that's a really cool piece of paper and you would never know that that was a little sweater so you just go ahead and you rip off anything with some color I try and stay away from like words and that type of thing but you know, here is some blue, and I will tell you, blue must be the in color because I noticed after I ripped these out and I was trying to get, like, different colors for next to each other, that I had a ton of blue. There's a lot of blue in this flyer. So, and then here we've got, like, the oil of Olay. I don't want it to say oil of Olay, but I did rip where all of the pretty... See, now that's just a bunch of pretty color, and you never really know that it's oil of Olay. And we can go across the top here where the lids are, grab some of that color. And this is going to be a little bit uneven, and that's good. Your, your little strips do not have to be totally straight. It's nice kind of when they pop up onto the next one, so we've got a few dips and valleys or valleys and mountains there so but let's see we don't want that one but maybe we'll take this purple right here and that looks good okay so we're going to use these to make our scrap monsters and you can do it one of two ways you can take a piece of card and just cut out a shape or you could take a, a piece of card and just put strips on the whole thing and then cut out your shape. So I like to do it either way. I love to make these little kind of like babushka dolls and they're just so easy. It's just, whoops, making a mess here. Um, you know, just a round bottom and then just kind of curve around at the top and a little bit of a smaller head. So they're super simple to make. And they don't have to be perfect. I just kind of try and get my little neck piece, my little curve there and around the same spot. And then I do like to, I don't like a completely flat bottom, so I just curve off the bottom when I get back there. And there we go. There's a shape for that. Or you can just take your scissors and just cut some kind of a really weird wonky shape. and you'll wind up with truly a scrap monster. So, and then it's easy as, use your water glue, and you wanna do this on parchment paper so that it will release. And um, what did I do with my paintbrush? Oh, here it is right in front of me, okay. And then just mix up your water glue. Now, I, I just put some more water and glue in here because I didn't think I was going to have enough. And remember, mixing your water glue is two parts glue to one part water. And basically, it makes something on the order of what you would do with Mod Podge. I'm going to set this up here. Get my scissors and my roll of parchment out of the way. And then you just put on some glue. Lay down some strips. Whoa, something just hit the front of the house. It is really windy here today. So, and I like to make my strips in a little bit of, I like to try and get some different color going on so that they're not all the same. But if you wanted, you could do them like all in hues of blue. So your whole scrap monster would be blue. 
And then once you get a few of those down, just put some glue on the top and finish it off. And the reason you need your parchment is because you need this to release when you're done. And you want ripped edges, not really cut edges. The ripped edges just look so much better. And right here I like missed a little spot that by the time we're done, nobody is ever going to notice that, that there's a little spot there that's white. You've got white on the edges of your paper and everything, so. And there we go. That one is done. We'll do this other one since I ripped him up already. I guess since I said that this was a, a real monster, it has to be a he, huh? <laughs> but it's just a matter of laying it up, layering it up. And I try and rip my paper a little bit close to the size, only for the fact of then, whoops, that one stuck to my finger, so that I actually um, have a little bit more paper to play with. Because once you have your glue on here and you put the glue on the top, once you cut those edges off, you're not going to want to, you're not going to want to use those again. And I'm doing it in strips, but you can also just do it in just little pieces. You can just take your little pieces and do it like a patchwork. Like this. I'll get back on there. I just pushed it all the way off. And I have some more little pieces. I'll just make some. But it looks cute both ways because you're going to put little stitch marks on it when you're done. I'm going to move this one over because it... Oh, let's put it back where it was. There we go. You can do little stitch marks when you're done. So if it kind of looks a little bit um, patchworky like this, that's really cute too. I'm going to rip that straight edge because I don't like straight edges. Yeah, and I hope you're enjoying this series. This series isn't about like something that's brand new and you know, this series is just about making. So, and enjoying what you're doing on a limited budget. So, you know, there's lots of videos of new things out there, but that really isn't what I'm trying to accomplish here. I'm just trying to accomplish um, you know, for those of you that are new, to be able to make right along with everyone else and have something to do each week. And I really enjoy it. I've done these projects before, but still as I do them, when I make my samples and and when I do my videos, I still really enjoy doing them. And I'm trying to pick things. Of course, these are things that I enjoy doing. Um, you may find that it's not your cup of tea. But sometimes it's worth a shot. Okay, so we have these two done. And what we're going to do is just let them dry a little bit. And then start to peel them off the paper. When they're this wet, you don't want to start to peel them up yet. Um, because your paper will rip so easily and let me see if I can show you this put my brush in the water I don't know if you'll be able to see this or not but here you can see the writing through this striped piece of paper here on the white backing and a little bit up here too now I have noticed that when I did my scrap monsters that was happening but on these scrap monsters I don't see any of that writing through once they're dry so now on that white piece it's possible that that little bit of writing could show but that's right up by the head so it's going to be covered anyways but as you're putting your glue on there and things are starting to show through don't think oh that's terrible and it's it that's going to be you know i'm going to see those words because more than likely you're not going to see that once it's dry so i'm going to set these aside for a minute and then we'll peel them off but i'll show you here here is a solid piece that i did and again there's no words showing through anywhere there 
So, and then you just, this one is one that I cut out. This is an actual little monster. But, and then all you do is just trim around the edges and get all of that paper off. And you can trim, sometimes I just think it's a little easier for me to trim right on the cardstock. Um, or you can just trim around the edge of the cardstock. Especially if you've got a shape that you're in love with, you don't want to trim right on the cardstock. You want to trim around the edge so that it so that the shape does not change. Just whatever is easiest for you. And there we go. There's one little monster. And then on this one, this one I am just going to trim right down the edge. Oh, still trimming the cardstock. That's just the way that I seem to do it. It's a little more solid, I think, easier to cut for me. And there we go. And now we've got a piece here. Now this piece you can use to make monsters with. You can also use it to make tags. You could make a tag for a journal. Now, while well, that's just a square tag, and you know, I don't know about rounding off the edges, well, all you have to do is take something and just hold it on there, kind of center it a bit, and take a pen. And just draw right around it. And because that was oval shaped, this has a nice delicate curve to it. You could do um, something that's very round, and then you would get a really rounded top. So you can round off those corners, or just, well, you could even say that's about center. You could even make it into a little banner. I always cut, when I cut a banner, cut up the center and then cut to the top of your line. That's the easiest way that I have found to do it. I've seen people show that way how to do it. That's how I learned it. Because when I try and cut this way and then cut this way, I always wind up not in the middle and one's longer than the other. And that looks pretty good. So, and I think that that seems a little wide, so I'm just going to go, well, let's snip a little bit of that off. And let's snip a little bit of that off. And look, there's a really pretty tag, and you can stitch on that, and then put a little message on it, or a little flower, or a drawing. So, and then you can make a babushka doll. I think that's what they're called. I don't really know just what I call them and I just think they're so cute now we're cutting off a lot of our paper with this but that's not wasted because we can use that paper to put little embellishments like on this one I used a piece of cut off paper to make his little horns there and on this one I gave her a little bit of a like a little scarf there and so those are from those are just from the extra bits here that's what I used to do those things so I'm gonna stop right here for just a second and I'll be right back okay I got that bit uploaded and I figured since I'm back we better get these peeled off now I do have a few bumps here so I'm just gonna kind of push those down a little bit and it's because these are made with the really thin paper I did kind of start this one already and um, what I do is I kind of like peel up on this and then I peel the parchment paper back and peel the parchment away from it and just go slow and go careful because this is wet and delicate at this point in time once it dries they're very very sturdy Trying to watch those edges so I don't peel off too much. And there we go. 
There's our little babushka, so we'll set her aside to completely dry. And you can dry them with a hair dryer um, if you want to, or just let them sit and dry while you're doing something else. Just kind of peel this parchment back. I just kind of wanted to show you how this part is done. And if you peel a piece off the front of your project, set that aside. If you were to peel a piece off the front of your project, just go back in and put another piece on there. No big deal. Nothing is um, nothing is unfixable. So I'm going to put those back on the parchment paper in a dry spot, and just let those sit till they dry. Okay, now the other ones that that I showed you how to cut out, I just want to show you. I did put black edging on here. And um, that just helps them to stand out a little bit. It's just a finishing touch. And so you just, and if you take your marker and you hold it towards your project this way, um, you get a little, oh, see, look, I made a mistake right there, but we'll fix that later. Just kind of hold it towards your prod, towards the painty part, and you get a little bit more black on that painty part then just a little bit of a darker line if you don't want a dark line at all you don't have to do this or if you want it to just be very faint then just um, hold it up straight and it will be a much thinner line and there we go now I've got a couple mistakes here I went off right there I'm gonna ignore that one totally and this one right here we're gonna wind up giving her a scarf anyways so it will be covered up so no big deal on this one I made a mistake up here and it's gonna be hard to see because I have dark paper but I accidentally went off here and I accidentally went off over here so I actually just went like this and gave him a little hairdo now that's gonna be his head since he's a monster he didn't have a definite head anyways but now he does so, but don't worry about it if you get onto your paper. No one's going to notice it later. The other ones that I did, I also had mistakes on. No big deal. Now, there's three ways that I stitch them. And um, I'll do it with the dark black. You can also do it like with a pen. Just a plain old ballpoint pen writes really well on this. Um, but I do, and you have to remember that, okay, I've got this blue line right here. So I'm going to do a straight stitch on this. And so just straight lines until I get to the top of that blue line and then go around follow those edges so remember you're not going straight across because our paper is ripped a little bit funky and that's why I like to rip the paper funky because I just think that looks so cute with it being stitched in kind of all different directions. Now the bottom of this is pretty straight, so we're just gonna go straight across. Now remember, the next piece, that stitch line is not stitching down this piece. If this was a piece of material, you would have to stitch it separately. So you need a stitch line along the edge. Let's see where this one goes, that flower's on the other piece, um, of each piece. Now this piece stops in right here, so I have to go up, and now I have to stitch across the top of this piece. So you're going to wind up with two lines where the two pieces come together. And again here, we've got the two lines on the top and one line on the edge because that's all you're seeing. And there we go. So that's how you do the straight stitch. But remember to have a stitch on the blue piece and on the orange piece. And when you've got two pieces coming together, you need two stitch lines there. It just looks so much better that way. Okay. And then the next piece is um, you can do little X's. Just as if you were. And make sure that the center of your X is at the point where the two pieces meet because you're sewing those two pieces together so you have to remember to do that and then when you get to the outside edge because it's being sewn to the piece on the back pretend um, then you are going to put the center of your X at the outside edge line so you're basically you're just gonna have a little V right there as if the other piece of that X was on the other side that you can't see. OK. 
Okay, now I've got two pieces coming together here, so I have to I have to sew these two together. Trying to keep the center of my X, and this one only sews to there because it's just on that little piece right there. So that's how you do that. Now with the X's, you're sewing the two pieces together at the same time, so you don't need two lines. You only need one, just where those two pieces come together with the center of your X right on the line where the two come together. So just like that, and again, just like a V, or the top half of your X for the edges. So that's how you do the X, and that's how you do the straight stitch. And then the other stitch is um, as if you were just doing like a tacking stitch, which is just like tack those two together with just a stitch. And then on the edges, just make your stitch. I usually try and put a stitch that comes into this piece and a stitch that comes into that piece. I'll do it better down here. One stitch here, one stitch here. And that, so that's also like a V, but that's like stitching one stitch into that piece and one stitch into that piece. And then again, just straight lines. Oh, and if they're not perfect, well, if you were sewing this, would they be perfect? Because if I was sewing it, they would not be perfect. They would not be the same size stitches, and they would not, like, be completely even because... I am not a sewer. I don't really care to sew. And so when I do it, it's kind of sloppy. Now you want, basically you want kind of half of your stitch on one piece and half of your stitch on the other. So kind of watch where your material is going. And that's the straight stitch. So I'm going to finish stitching these up really quick and be right back. Okay, I'm back, and now it's just time to dress them up, and we're all done. So I was looking at these scraps here, and which one was it? This one, I think. I kind of thought I could see like a little mustache in this one. So I thought I would try um, and just kind of cut this like a mustache. We'll see how this actually works out. I'm always all fingers and thumbs. There we go. Like that. And like that. It does kind of look like a mustache. Let's see. I'm going to have to adjust it a little bit. I think this one needs to be a little bit deeper like that. Maybe. And this one, I think I have to cut off that point. Because I didn't have enough paper on the other side to go up that far. I'm good with that. It's not like totally perfect. It's not symmetrical, but he's a scrap monster. He's not supposed to be perfect. So I'm just going to go around the edges of this one. And I'm not going to stitch this one. I'm just going to leave it with just the, just the colors. Oh, and the nice thing I didn't notice is that these go these go up and down and these ones go across so that's kind of cool okay so there's a little mustache for our little guy now he needs some eyes for my monsters I like to use googly eyes now on this one I think that the big eyes are going to just be too big yeah I think those are too big I have three sizes in here let's see well it's kind of like he wants to have those big eyes I think that the middle size is going to be the right. Ooh, should I do two size eyes? Oh, 
What about it? Yeah, let's do that. No, I can't do that. Let's find another medium size. Let's see. Oh, yes. He looks much better with the same size eyes. Well, these are just full of static clean. Okay, and for to glue things onto my scrap monsters, I just used my um, tacky glue that we got at the Dollar Tree and the googly eyes I got at the Dollar Tree. And so since we only had to get the googly eyes this week, we should have $4 left from this week. Last week we used most of our savings, so we only had 50 cents left out of what we had saved because we bought the card stock. But so right now we should have $4.50 set aside. And we're getting very close to our jelly plate. We're going to give him his little mustache. And there. I think he looks cute. Oh, you know what I could have done? Um, he's all covered with glue now, so I'm not going to. But I could have taken that mustache and kind of curled it up a little bit. That would have been even cuter. Kind of gave it a little bit of dimension. Yeah, he's too stuck. But he's still cute. Alrighty, and then let's see. Now, for my little babushka dolls... What I did when I started making my scrap monsters way back when is I went and I just, I drew some shapes on a piece of paper and then I just started putting faces on them. And I did this so that, like see this little monster face would have looked cute on him too. Um, I did it so that I wouldn't have to decide at the time, oh how am I going to do this face. I did a bunch of faces and then... I just use these. I look through them and say, oh, I think I like this face for this doll. Now, for my babushka dolls, I always make them, I always like them like that because I just think that is so cute. So all you have to do is just take a little piece of cardstock and use your black marker and make yourself a face. And then you just want to make sure that it's going to fit on there. You don't want it to be too big, but if it's too big, um, a lot of times you can just trim around it. I think that that one's going to be okay. And I just like to give them a little curl of hair. And I like the little sleepy eyes with the eyelashes. And sometimes they could have just a little bit of a brow or eyebrow, a little nose. And they always seem to be happy. So content with their eyes closed, they look content. And then just cut around that and we'll glue that on her. And she'll be all ready. And see, these are our scrap monsters, but she's not a monster. Even the monsters aren't monsters. They're so cute. I still have a couple of card bases left from the card bases I showed you last week. Oh, yes, that's just so cute. And then you can color her face in a little bit with some color if you want to. If you have eyeshadows, I like to use eyeshadows on their faces in just the light, light peaches or light, light pinks. Um, so if you have some old eyeshadow, you can use that to color their face with the, especially if it has the mica powders, if it's kind of shimmery, it looks really pretty. If we don't have those in our batch and we don't really need them because she looks cute just like that. And then we can just take some of this and make her a little scarf. Just like that. Whoops, 
I'm going to put the glue back on the top. And then we have the little tag that we made. So we can figure out something to do with the tag. And when I do the scarf, I just do it like this. And then after it's all dry, I turn it over and just trim off the excess scarf from the back. It's just, it's easier to do when it's dry because it doesn't move, but we'll do it now so we can see what she looks like. There we go. And she's got her little scarf. Now I could have outlined that before, but I kind of like the scarves to just blend in a little bit. So there's our little girl. And then we've got our tag. And with the tag, we could take one of our dragonflies and put it on there. Looks a little bit big. We could take one of our stones and put it on there. And I thought that the color of that stone was really pretty. And so I am going to just put that right on there because I like it. And that's the whole thing. You just do what you like. I tried three or four of the stones before I found the one I liked. There was two that I that I liked, and this is the one I like the best for this particular tag and the coloring and everything else. So now with that tag, I could just put a little banner on there. And just put some put a word on there. Yeah, this is not the one I'll use because it's kind of messy, but just kind of so you could see. Put a little, like I said, this is not the one I'm going to use, but just to kind of show you how you could do this. And there, there's a little tag to put in a pocket or something. So this is just really fun. I hope that you enjoy it. I will be back in just a few minutes to show you all the finished pieces and show you what we need for next week. Okay, so we're at the finish. And who would have ever thought that this could turn into these? And I just think that they are so cute. These are the, this is one of the ones that we just glued. And I'm going to, I haven't got his eyes on there yet, but I just set them there. So he's going to have little eyes like that. And I cut the babushka out a little bit smaller than um, what originally I had. Because I noticed this was my sample one. And then this was the one that we did today. And then this is the one that we glued, but I made her a little smaller so that I would have the three sizes of babushka. So I'll finish her in a little while. So there's our little guy with his mustache, and I, he, I put little zigzags on his mustache and a little bit of a mouth there. And I did put that love on there, and I put some little um, sparklies with my sparkly nail polish on there. And I still have this whole piece left. So, and the other one that I had, I stuck him on a card. Um, just like I'll show you. He was drying in a big book, so but I stuck him on one of the cards that I had left over from last week, so he's so cute on that card. And anyways, so this is what you can do with your just little scrap pieces of paper and a little bit of cardstock and some googly eyes. So for next week, we are going to need to pick up at the Dollar Tree. A roll of 3M tape. Now they do have a larger roll of tape in the um, this is this is in their mail section and they have a larger roll in the um, like their hardware section but it looks like it has a little bit of a yellow tint to it it has much more tape on it 
but it looks like it has a yellow tint and this is going to go really far so you can get the other one but this one will be just fine and then you are going to need pictures out of magazines and um, this is a picture out of a book I think that I have an inkjet printer and that does not work very well for what we're going to try I'm going to try this postcard and this is like you can buy this you know it comes in a magazine like you can buy this and this this kind of card works really well out of a magazine and the magazine pictures work really well <coughs> excuse me and next week we're going to make our own stickers and so if you have some of these labels where they're almost gone and let's say you've got a little bit of it that's already empty um, save this because this works perfect to put your homemade stickers on because it's already it's a non-stick you can also put them on your parchment but this works really well and it's just it's one of those things Papa got this actually yesterday but he didn't want them because um, he already has enough so I started to peel these off and rip them up and I wanted to just show you that this is what it is it's one of those little label things um, with your name and address on it and also if you get these types of things you know it's got your name and address on it but if you just cut it right there you've got a little sticker with dogs on it and a little sticker with flowers and a little sticker with a bird so you can always just cut those right there and you've got your own little sticker that you don't even have to purchase so but again magazine magazine pictures work the best so find some small magazine pictures they can actually be any size that you want them to be um, but find some magazine pictures and maybe some card pictures and we're going to make homemade stickers next week. So the only thing you'll need to pick up is the 3M tape. And that's clear packing tape. And we're going to make some stickers. And then you should have $4 left. You should have $4 from last week because we only had to get googly eyes. And we have $0.50 cents left over from before that. So we should now have eight fifty in our stash after next week. And I think that that will be enough with our $5 from the week after that to make our jelly plate so I do have to add everything up but so after next week or the week after we'll be making a jelly plate thank you very much for watching I hope that you enjoyed making the scrap monsters I enjoyed showing you how to do that and I hope that you all have an outstanding day bye bye just a really quick postscript I just wanted to come and show you how the first one that we glued together how our little babushka doll turned out and how cute those are together wouldn't they just make a cute card or a, a cute journal page and then our little monster he just didn't want those googly eyes so he got his own face and he just wanted to come and say bye bye y'all see y'all later thanks for watching and have an outstanding day bye bye